11 to 11. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll eat the eggs, the sausage, and I'll leave the pancakes. Praise God. Bless the Lord. I think it was James, uh, you know, we haven't, we, we just really passed out these pledge cards, you know, for a building project. And, of course, we're looking forward to, uh, we had a goal up there of $150,000. And, uh, you know, just over the past week or week and a half, we've raised, I thought, what was it, $27,000 and what have you. I mean, no, that's, <laughs> that's, that's a pretty good chunk of money. And you know what? If it goes like that, look at me. We'll have $150,000 in no time flat. And I believe if everybody does their part, hear me, we'll see it done and established in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord forevermore. He's a God that goes beyond. He's a, he, he's a God of abundance in the name of the Lord Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'm just happy, happy, happy. When we come in here, I'm telling you what, I could sense the presence of the Lord. Bless God. I just could feel the presence of God. I don't know about you, but I love to soak in that presence. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah to the Lamb. Some would say, well, I didn't feel a thing. Well, you know, yeah, sometimes maybe you don't, sometimes you do. But I want to tell you, I felt, you could just, you know, I don't go by my feelings. Don't get me wrong. But man, I could sense the Holy Spirit and he's still here right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God. And, uh, uh, you know, sometimes maybe we get in the way of the Holy Spirit. We should just stop and just let the Holy Spirit have his way and forget about Pastor Martin's way. Amen. And let the Holy Spirit be the Holy Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God. But that's what the Holy Spirit's given for, that he might lead us and guide us as he lives right inside us in the name of, in the, name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody have a testimony tonight. Bless the Lord that you want to give God some praise. Yeah, Lord. Go ahead, Tony. Amen. Praise God. Let's just pray for her right now. Father, we pray for Amber's mother. Lord God, as she goes in for this cath, Lord, we just ask God for a good report to come forth out of this. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Lord, we just truly thank you and we praise you. We thank you for technology, Lord, what we have. And God, every good and perfect gift comes from you. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you for what doctors can do and what technology can do. But you can go way beyond that, Father, because you're God and you can do anything. So, Lord, we just ask, God, that you would touch Amber's mother in the name of Jesus. As you truly praise you, glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless the Lord. Anybody else tonight? Praise God. Hallelujah. Tom? Amen. Let's just pray for Sherry. Father, we pray right now for Sherry. God, you know what the situation is. You know what's happening. You know what's going on in the mind. And God, I'm just asking that you would touch that affected area, God, that's causing these seizures in the name of Jesus. Lord, we know that you're a healer. We know that your word is a medicine to the flesh. And God, we apply that word right now to Sherry, that by his stripes we're healed. In the name of Jesus. So, Father, we thank you and we praise you for the power of your Holy Spirit just to touch Sherry right now in Jesus' name. We thank you and we praise you, God, for a good report to come forth in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Bless the Lord. I don't know about you, but there's power in Jesus' name. We don't have to pray an ecclesiastical prayer. Bless God. All we got to do is just apply the name of Jesus to the situation. Hallelujah. And can I tell you something? things begin to happen in the name of the Lord. Yeah. Seth? Yeah, um, uh, I work with a guy um, uh, every Thursday. We do a job together. A couple hours on Thursday. And he is um, he's an electrician, but he's a musician as well. So we all kind of talk to him and we just kind of share that time of course. Um, and last week he was telling me situations around his 
fantastic. Um, and as he was telling me this last week, I told him, I said, I, I, I don't know what, I, I don't know how to react to what you're telling me, but I can tell you that, that I will bring you up to our church and we'll pray uh, on your behalf. And um, I kept trying to talk to him about God, but he kept turning the, the he, every time I tell him about God, he said, well, I'm a good spirit, so I'm a good spirit, so like that. <laughs> but this last week, um, of course, we went down to uh, Southern Ohio for the big girls to sing and play down there. So when I came up, I just, you know, being a proud dad, I went in there and showed him, you know, and played all all, uh, all the songs that the girls sang. You know, I had it on my phone. Um, and he listened to them. And uh, I just think there's an open door there. Um, yeah. Know, that's that's going to that that's going to allow me to really talk to him because I think right now over the last couple of weeks um, been able to witness to him on a small scale, but now also on the flip side of that he's got a serious situation in life, yeah. and, um, and I think the dots are going to start getting connected together. So a uh, few few words, remember him in your prayers for healing, and then. Uh, I don't know if I want to say more importantly, but equally as important, yeah, more importantly, that uh, that I get an opportunity to really get the right and bolts. With him. Yeah, exactly. Bless the Lord. Father, we pray right now, God, for this man that Seth's talking about, Lord. Father, we just believe that, Lord, that you're drawing his heart towards you. Sometimes, God, our back's placed against a wall before we ever look up to you. And we know that you can use all circumstances and situations, Lord, to for you to be able to be spoken into his heart and into his life. So, Father, we thank you for the opportunities that you give Seth, Lord, to be able to speak into his heart, give him the words to speak, God, at the right time, in Jesus' name. And we pray, God, for healing to flow through the body, Lord, this thyroid, whatever it is, Lord. We just ask, in Jesus' name, that there be a supernatural touching and moving and stirring, God, not only physically, but most of all spiritually, in the name of the Lord Jesus, so we truly thank you. We praise you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Anybody else tonight? Bless the Lord. Liz? song, I've anchored my soul in the haven of rest. Man, that's where we need to anchor it, right in here, right in the Word of God. Praise the Lord. It, it builds you, brings peace of mind, builds you and brings you into your inheritance in the name of the Lord Jesus. Bless the Lord. Best thing you can ever do is when your mind's been saturated and bombarded by the powers of hell, just open up the Bible and start reading through the Bible. I'll guarantee you the devil won't be around very long. 
You know why? Because they don't like the Word. The Word is light, and the Word is life, and the Word is health. And he don't like none of that because his characteristic is a thief, steal, kill, destroy, and that's what his characteristic is. But Jesus said, I've come that they might have life and have it more abundantly in the name of Jesus. I don't know about you, but I choose Jesus' side instead of my side. The Bible says, lean not to your own understanding, but in all thy ways trust in the Lord, and he shall bring it to pass. Hallelujah to the Lamb. How many, of, how many of us have leaned to our own understanding? Our own understanding gets us nowhere but headaches, uh, restless nights. You can't sleep. You've done everything. You've exhausted your abilities and said, I can't do no more. And God said, that's exactly where I want you to where you're not leaning to yourself. Now you can lean on me. Bless the Lord forevermore. But sometimes it takes a lot of hard knocks before we learn those things. And I've been there, done that, had a bite out of that apple. Sometimes I probably have more knock, knocks on my head than what you've got on yours. But sooner or later, we learn to let things rest and place them in the Lord's hands. And there's nothing you can do about it anyhow. It's all up to the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Enoch. Uh, just, I'd like to encourage the people to prayer this weekend. Uh, Sunday will be up in Ohio, Michigan. And, uh, Pastor Bill and Word and in Song. Amen. He's uh, a great pastor up there. And uh, we really love him. And uh, he, he's got us down quite often this year. And uh, it's, it's a little over 200 mile drive. But, right. Uh, I'd like the church just to always keep us in prayer yeah. because sometimes, you know, me and her talk, sometimes, you know, you go to so many churches and you don't see souls being saved. Even though you have great services, it's always on your mind. You yeah. know, I had a great service, but it could have been better if someone would have been our church. Right. Lord. So we're, yeah. we're continuing to pray for that soul winner's anointing that Amen. the Lord would uh, would pour out the soul winner of anointing that, that we would start to see. Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise God. God. Yeah. Praise God. God. Father, we just pray right now for Enoch and Teresa as they travel. Father, we thank you for traveling mercies that you give to them. In the name of Jesus, most of all, the anointing, God, that breaks and severs yokes off of those that are not saved, that God, new births would be brought into the kingdom of God through the ministry of music in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the seed that be sown but Lord God, the Holy Spirit has something to work with in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you, God, that sometimes we sow the seed, somebody else does the watering, but you give the increase. So we thank you and we praise you that we can be vessels and instruments, God, and tools, Lord, be used of you in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I pray that constantly and continuously. I, I was, I, I, I've got a... Uh, journal that I've started last year or year before and uh, I, I journal every day and uh, it's kind of like a diary I guess I, I, I don't know what a diary what women write in diaries but I kind of pretty well write out what went through through the day and I have every one of my Sunday morning uh, messages on there and what have you and, and uh, how the spirit moved or whatever but I noticed this year there has not been one soul one to the Lord Jesus Christ this year yet. You know what? That worries me. That worries me. Uh, now, don't get me wrong. I've won people to the Lord outside of the church. But I believe the church ought to be a hospital to win souls for the Lord. My prayer is this. I cry out like Rachel cried out when she couldn't have a child. She said, she said told uh, Jacob, give me children lest I die. And Jacob said, I'm not God. How can I do that? I can't do it. But can I tell you, the church needs to be a birthing chamber and cry out to God and say, God, give us babes in Christ, spiritual births in Christ, lest we die in Jesus' name. I don't know about you, but when a new baby comes into the household, there's a whole lot of joy goes on. When that baby comes forth, man, I mean, there's just the smiles and rejoicings and what have you. And can I tell you, very same way spiritually, when I see somebody come to the altar and give their heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to run through a troop and leap over a wall. I want to jump on those chandeliers and swing if I could. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And I know some of you is watching by live stream and saying, I knew it. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah, roll on the floors. They do this, that. Swing from the chandelier. He's already admitted it. Bless the Lord. But you know what? Hear me. Hallelujah. We've been tagged as holy rollers. Why don't we be holy rollers? 
in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on. Give the Lord a hand clap. I'm not embarrassed about anything. Hear me. Bless God. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation. Hallelujah. I'm not ashamed of it. Bless the Lord. If people hear me get slayed in the spirit, more power. Bless God. Thank God for it. If they want to shout, dance, hear me. There's a time. There's a, pay, a place for that. In every service, I believe that without a shadow of a doubt, there's a time to be still before the Lord and let the Lord speak and minister to our hearts. And you know that as well as I do. There's a stillness that comes across the congregation and the Lord begins to deal with individuals' hearts and lives. There's a time to be shut up and there's a time to listen to what the Spirit of God says to you in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. Bless the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. Let's get into the Word or we ain't going to get started here tonight. Out, praise God. First John 5, 7. In, uh, vitally important teaching tonight. First John 5, 7. First John 5, 7. If you turn over there. Bless the Lord. We don't have too many more chapters in First John. We're getting down toward the end. First John 5, 7. Let me know when you're there. Everybody there? Let's read it together. For there are... Let's read it one more time. For there are... Everybody go. One, two, three. Now, when he says there are three, that tells me that there's three. Three means three. One, three chairs. One, two, three. Okay? Keep that in mind, all right? Bless the Lord. For there are three that bear record in where? Heaven. What are they? The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. Here we see the doctrine of the Trinity. Are you hearing me? It's the doctrine of the Trinity. The Father, say it with me, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. Bless the Lord. And you know what? Some people that take you the task on that, especially the Jesus-only guy people, understand me. But hear me, there's too much Scripture to show that there are three in one in the name of the Lord Jesus. I don't know about you, but we believe and teach in this church the triune God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We just don't baptize in Jesus' name only. But we baptize in the Father, Son, and, and, and uh, the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Because that's what Jesus said. Go into the world and baptize in them. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. But these three are one. Listen to Dake's commentary here on this scripture. Dake says this. Three persons cannot be one person. I like that. Three persons cannot be one person in number in any sense. But the three can be one in unity. Amen? Three can be one in unity. We believe, and as I said, we teach the Trinity here. Hear me. There is but one true and living God who is everlasting, infinite in power, wisdom and goodness. He is the creator of all things, visible, invisible, preserver of all things in the unity of the Godhead. There are three persons of one individual essence who is co-equal, co-existent, co-eternal, Namely, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The uh, three persons in the Godhead through Scripture. We can see this all through Scripture. Hear me, child of God. I want to take you to one, if we would please. Go to Matthew, the third chapter. Matthew, the third chapter. How many know it's vitally important to know doctrine? Because if you don't know the Word of God, look at me... You, <laughs> You're not going to be able to, you won't stand for anything. You'll be duped for every, every false doctrine that comes down the pike. But man, when you know the word of God, hallelujah, you know when something is being taught that it is not doctrine, it's not the word of God. Hear me, but it's error. My Lord, how we need discernment in the body of Christ today. Amen. Bless the Lord forevermore. And the word gives you discernment. Matter of fact, in Hebrews, you don't need to turn there, but Hebrews, I've quoted all the time, it says, it, it says the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing even the center of soul and spirit 
and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of a man's heart. The word itself is a discerner. Hear me. Hallelujah. Not alone the, the, the gift of discernment to know what is right and what is wrong, what, it, what, what spirit has been in operation, whether it's a holy spirit or whether it's an evil spirit. Are you hearing me? Bless Lord. Bless the Lord. I thank God that we can know truth and truth can set us free in Jesus name. But Matthew 3, Matthew 3:13 3, through 17. Listen to what it says here. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. Now, understand something. This isn't a baptism of repentance for Jesus because he's the spotless lamb of God. It was a baptism into his ministry. Hear me, because he's just starting out his ministry here. But John forbid him, saying, I have need to be baptized of you, and comest you to me? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now, how many can see the Trinity in this? Uh, you know, if there's not three people here, look at me. Jesus is a, is a great ventriloquist. And some would even say that. Uh, how stupid. You see... You see, when he comes up, you see the Spirit descend down upon Jesus. You see Jesus, the Son. And then you hear a voice coming out of heaven. This is my beloved Son. Hear me. Why would he say, this is my Son? Hear me. If he's got a Son, that means that there, there's two. Amen? If he's got a Son, that means there's two of them. Bless the Lord. So, he said, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So we see, we see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit here. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You see, it's the Father that introduced the plan of salvation. Am I right? Hallelujah. It's the Son that carried out the plan of, of the Father. Right? It's the Holy Spirit that convicts the, convicts the sinner of his need of repentance. These three are in unity, and they're so closely tied together that they are one. Hear me, you can't separate them apart. It's like a three-braided rope. There's three braids in that rope, but it's one rope, right? Hallelujah. And it's the very same thing with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bless the Lord. The Holy Spirit convicts the sinner of his need of repentance. Bless the Lord. These three are one. In 1 John 5, 8, let's look at this for a second. 1 John 5, 8, going back. Hallelujah. 1 John 5, 8. It says, and there are, are three that bear witness in earth. Read, the spirit, the water, the blood, and these three agree in one. You see, the Spirit speaks of the Holy Spirit. Are you hearing me? The water speaks of the incarnation, not water baptism, the incarnation or humanity of Christ. But, uh, and, and understand something, even though Christ was, uh, took on the form of man, he never ceased to be deity. Hear me. He always was deity. He was always God. Hallelujah. The blood speaks of the atonement or the cross. He laid, Jesus laid aside the expression of deity, but never lost, hear me, or ceased in his deity. Bless the Lord. He came and beat the devil as a man. Filled with the Holy Spirit, just like you and just like me. Oh, come on, folks. Praise God. Hear me. When he hung on the cross, you know what he said? I thirst. When his earthly ministry, he said he was tired. Look at me. He got tired just like you get tired. He said, let us go, you know, and rest for a season. When somebody pinched him or somebody hit him, he, he, he felt it. Are you hearing me? He was just as human as what you and I was, hear me, but yet God in the flesh. That's why he can be a faithful high priest 
to intercede for you and me because he knows what we go through right here on the face of the earth. Maybe, you know, we can give prayer requests. And people are going through some horrible things in their life. You've never been down those roads before. And maybe nobody in the church has ever been down those roads before. And you say, nobody just understands what, what's going on in me. But there is one that understands what's going on in you because he's been there. His name is Jesus. Bless the Lord. That's why he can be a faithful high priest. He can intercede for you. Hallelujah. I thank God, look at me, that we've also got the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us, which, which helps us to pray with groanings which cannot be uttered, according to Romans. We've got Jesus seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you and for me. And we've got God's people interceding for you. And for, look at me, we can't lose. I said we can't lose. Glory to God. Get your thought pattern off the blues. You don't lose, honey. We're on the winning side. Come on, somebody glorify God in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord forevermore. But these three agree. Hallelujah. And as I said, Christ was very much man, while at the same time being very much God who died on the cross for fallen humanity. And I thank God that he did. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In 1 John 5, 9, it says this. Let's read it together. If we receive the witness of men, or the testimony of men, the witness of God is greater. Boy, you know what? You ought to take that scripture to the bank. Hear me. Take a claim on it in Jesus' name. Can I tell you something? The doctors might say that you're terminal, but Jesus says that, you look at me, you're healed by his stripes. If we can receive, look at me, if we can receive the witness of God, or the witness of man, how much greater is the witness of God? Well, what's the witness of God? Right here, the Word of God, the promises of the Lord. Praise God. I don't know about you, but we learn to stake our claim on the Word of God. If God said it, hear me, His Word will not return void, but accomplish the very thing He sends it to do in the name of Jesus. The time you put takes Uh, state claim to a scripture, hear me, you've got the devil, which is a claim jumper, will try to steal away that promise in your heart by, by, by putting, hear me, doubts of fear, unbelief, to pull you away from the promise of God Almighty, to get you into your intellect, where doubt and fear originates, hear me, instead of being led by the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. If we just listen to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will take us in and through and out in Jesus' name. Glory to God forevermore and evermore. And someone say, that's easier said than done. You certainly is easier said than done. But look at me. I've been there and done that. and You've been there and done that. And can I tell you something? God's Word is truth. If we can believe the witness of man, how much greater is the witness? How much greater is God's Word? Man, I don't know about you, but I've staked my whole life on the Word of God. My life is dependent upon the Word of God. Hallelujah. 30, uh, 40 some years ago, I accepted Christ into my heart and into my life. And from that time on, I've depended upon the Lord to take care of my eternal salvation. And can I tell you, He not only took care of that, but He took care of my physical needs as well. And the reason, hear me, you know that through Scripture because Scripture says He's able to, he, he, He provides everything that pertains to life and godliness. Hallelujah. So He can take care of everything in the name of the Lord. Matter of fact, the disciples are worried about where they're going to get their meals if they follow after Him, where they're going to lay their head down. He said, don't worry about those things. Bless God. But He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these other things shall be added unto you. He said, I've clothed the lilies, the flowers on the hillside. How beautiful they are. I've done that, the Lord said. Bless the Lord. And he said, you're way greater than a flower. He says, I know when a sparrow drops out of the sky. And you're way far greater than a sparrow. Don't you think I'm able to take care of you, says the Lord? He certainly is. Hear me, he certainly can. Praise God. But here's the kicker. Do we believe the word of God? We've got to believe it. To receive it. Say it with me. you got to believe it to receive it. One more time. you got to believe it to receive it. 
It says, these three agree, hear me, these three agree that Christ is very man, while at the same time very God, who died on the cross, as I said, for our, 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 our sins. And we thank the Lord for it. But Christ knows everything that we go through right here on the face of the earth. Every little detail of our life, He knows about it. Matter of fact, before it ever happens, He already knows it. Now that just short-circuited some of our minds. Some would say, well, how do you, how do you know that? Scripture says it. What did he tell Peter? Peter said, you know what, Lord, I'm going to die for you. I'd die for you before you ever go to the cross. <laughs> I'll never deny you. What did he tell him, Marvin? Well, he said that he would. And, uh, the this same that, day. Right, and he said the cross would go three times. Three times. Matter of fact, he told him what was going to happen way ahead of time. God knows what's going to happen to you way ahead of time. I don't know about you, but... I'm, I want to put my, my, my soul, my spirit, my body in the hands of the one that knows ahead of time. Are you hearing me? Bless God. Hallelujah. Before this night's over, you'll deny me three times. When the cock crows, can I tell you something? That rooster became an evangelist to Peter. Never spoke a word, but all he did was crow. Sick chicken, but hear me. <laughs> but you know what? That chicken's voice was anointed. Because when that, when that chicken made that third crow, the Bible said Peter wept bitter tears streamed down his heart of repentance. Brokenness, are you hearing me? Because he knew what he said. I'd die for you, and yet he's denying him right before his face. I never knew him. That's what he was telling the little damsel. I never knew him. And folk, hear me. God knows our life Ahead of time. Hallelujah. And can I tell you this? He can warn us ahead of time. Don't take that road. Have you ever heard that before? Don't go down that road. But here's what you say. Well, this is an easier road right here. I just might take this way. Let me give this in here. Lean not to your understanding. There's a way that seemeth right unto man, but the ends thereof is the way of death. Look at me. Take the right road. Listen to that inward voice, which is called the Spirit of God, bearing witness with your spirit. Don't go that direction, but go this direction. And when you go the direction the Spirit leads you, you're sure to hit the mark of the prize of the high calling in Jesus' name. But if you go the other direction, look at me, you're going to flip-flop. You're going to flip-flop. It's not going to work out. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. And He will direct your path. <laughs> Simple verse of Scripture. But how many of us do that? Acknowledge Him. Take it to Him first. And pray. God, and you know what? Sometimes the devil can set traps. I remember Enoch, you said something about, when, didn't you go to Detroit up there or something? You got a job up there, or whatever, what was that? And, got, uh, Three Rivers, Michigan, GM. At GM. Yeah, you was praying for a job, got up, up, up there, got that job and opened up to you, wasn't it? And uh, ended up backsliding up there. Yep. I was, I was laid off and Isaac came over and we prayed about it and everything. About two weeks later, got the job and uh, we was up there six months and never attended church. Right back to the old ways. You know, you want to thank God gave me that as a miracle, but you always wonder, you know, where did that job come from? Right. Sometimes the devil knows us how to set traps. Are you hearing me? And it really looks good. I mean, it looks good. And it looks like, man, I'm right in the perfect will of God. And then all of a sudden, the house of cards fall apart. Bang. And you find yourself in a ditch. Hear me. Hallelujah. That, that could have been the case, and it could not have been the case. Hear me. Bless the Lord. It's the choices that we make. We choose, you know, what path we want to, want to go down. But I do know one thing. Hear me. The devil's good at tricking God's people, thinking that this is God when it isn't God. Hallelujah. Can I tell you this? Look at me. There's times and seasons we've got to wait. Yes. Hello. You pray about the situation, and then all of a sudden... Wow, this thing opens up and you say, my Lord, I'm jumping in this with both feet. You get in there, both feet, and you're in it about a month, and you go, my God, what happened to me? 
What's going on? Everything's falling apart. God, I thought this was you. What's happening to my life? But you see, if we go right back to square one, hear me, and we'd wait upon the Lord, and God would begin to give witness in the Spirit, hear me, and not presumption. Hallelujah. There's nothing wrong with waiting. Come on. I preach to myself in this. There's nothing wrong with waiting. Hear me. Hallelujah. When you wait, things begin to happen. Things begin to take place. How many has ever seen a sale or, or seen something that you wanted and you said, oh man, that's what I want. And somebody says, well, wait, you know, two weeks or three weeks and it'll be on sale and you get it $20, $30 cheaper. And you go, well, I don't want to wait that long. I want it now. <laughs> Hello. How many know that patience is a virtue? It's a virtue. We need to learn to wait on the Lord. Petition God and then wait. And see what the Lord does. When the Lord says it's time to move, then move. Hear me. Hallelujah. You know, uh, the children of Israel, when they was in the wilderness, and the tabernacle, I'm telling you, it was, it was a job to set that tabernacle up. You had the curtains, the outer courts, the inner courts. You had the... You had the, the, the the uh, furniture, you had the Ark of the Covenant, you had all different th- types of things. And there, if you read in Leviticus and, and, and Deuteronomy, you read, or Exodus, you read that, you know, the Lord would, would said that, you know, he would follow, he would be, lead them by day by a, a, a cloud and by night by a pillar of fire. And when that cloud moved, they had to move. When the pillar of fire at night moved, they had to move. I mean, they could sit back and say, well, I hit the snooze button here. Nope. Everybody had their responsibility to do and look at me. If you didn't do it, you was in trouble. I said, you was in trouble. And here's the thing. I mean, it took time to set this tabernacle up in the wilderness. Hear me. It wasn't no easy task. And sometimes God would send them to a place for one day and then the cloud would move or the fire would move and they'd have to get up, pull up stakes and away they go. God did it just for them to be obedient to follow after Him. And you know what, folk, hear me. We've got to be in tune with the Holy Spirit to know what voice we're hearing. Am I hearing the voice of self? Am I, you know, in Scripture even says there's so many voices in the world. And boy, there is. You got the voice of the world. You got the voice of self. You got the voice of the devil. And you've got the voice of the devil. Or you got the voice of the world. Hear me. A God. Which voice do we pick out? It's very, very needful to know what voice we are following. Jesus said, my sheep Know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. Let's know the voice of our Father. I've followed other voices. And can I tell you this? They led me to the ditch. And you know what? I draw darkness, I draw, draw riches out of the dark areas of my life. How in the world can you draw riches out of the darkest areas of your life not to do it again? How many know that's wisdom? That's wisdom. How many have seen people do the same thing over and over and over again? You think they would smarten up after three or four times. Not to do it again. Hallelujah. Vitally important to know God's word. Hallelujah to the Lamb. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater, for this is the witness of God which he hath testified of his son. The scripture says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Am I right? Hallelujah. Hear the Lord saying, if we can believe man, how much more can we believe God? I don't know about you. We used to sing that song, whose report do you believe? We will believe the report of the Lord. You see, in heaven we have the Father, the Holy Spirit, and the Son, all bearing witness that Jesus is the Christ the Son of the living God. God's Word is more trustworthy than any human being. I stake my claim on the Word 
of the living God. In 1 John 5.10, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. Look at this. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. Which tells me this, I can know I'm saved. And I say this, you better know you're saved before you take your last breath here on the face of the earth. And here it's testifying of that in Scripture. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness, where? In himself. Hallelujah. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. I wonder where the, this leads the Jesus-only people. Think of it. Hallelujah. We have the witness in ourselves. I love that. I have the witness in myself. Romans 8.16 says this, His Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. How does He communicate to us? Through our spirit. His Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we're the children of God. How many know that man is made up triune man? Three parts. Paul talked about it in Thessalonians. I think it's 2 Thessalonians. He said, I pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord. Spirit, soul, and body. Say it with me. Spirit, soul, and body. Three. Triune man. You got the body, the outward man. Hear me. You got the soul, which is the psyche of man. Hear me. And you got the spirit, hear me, which is reborn. And that's where the Holy Spirit lives and abides on the inside of you. That's the real you that's going to live on forever. Hear me. Bless the Lord. But look at me. I look like one body, don't I? One body, but there's three parts in me. You're seeing the outward shell of me, called carnality or flesh. Many Christians are led by the outward shell and not the spirit. They, You see... The outward shell, or the, the body, it goes by smell, hearing, taste, and touch. The inward man, the soul and the spirit are inter- intertwined. Are you hearing me? The soul is the imagination, conscience, and reason, affection. The spirit is a sense faculties of faith and reverence, prayer, and worship. Hallelujah. This is where it's made up in your spirit. Hear me, child of God. Where the Holy Spirit communes with our spirit that we are children of of the living God. It's just like the tabernacle in the old wilder- in the, the wilderness. You had the, the out, outer court, you had the inner court, yeah. and you had the Holy of Holies. The outer court was the flesh. Yeah. Are you hearing me? The, and can I tell you, you had to have sacrifice before you even got into the inner court. Which means, you've got to die to get into the holy place in the name of the Lord. You, the outward man's got to die. Paul says, I die daily. Now this is good teaching here, folks. Hear me. He says, I die daily. That old man's got to die out daily. Hear me. How do I do that? By looking to the cross. When Jesus died, that old man died as well. Understand me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We're not to be led by this old man any longer. Hear me. He's to be crucified. Understand me. Hallelujah. He's dead. Bless God. So therefore, look at me. If a dead man is dead, how can he, he can be tempted, but how can he take the bait? If there's a dead man laying up here and he's an alcoholic, and I come up with a bottle of beer and say, here, have a beer. And I sit there for, for three or four hours and try to persuade him to take a, take a drink of beer. You know, people would say, well, you're crazy. He's dead. Well, that's what happens. That's the way we're to look at ourselves. The old sin nature has died with Christ. That old lustful nature, that old sinful nature. Hear me. It's dead with Christ. That's why we've got to keep looking to the cross daily. Daily. Everybody say daily. daily. It's a daily dying out. Otherwise, the old man resurrects. This old carnal man does. We're not to be led by this fleshly man. Hallelujah. Because hear me, God don't communicate with our flesh. His flesh has gone back to the dust of the earth. 
The soul and the spirit, hear me, the spirit, God, the Holy Spirit speaks to our spirit. The, the, the Holy Spirit speaks to our soul, our conscience. Yeah. Our conscience, hear me, it can be in tune with the Lord or it can be seared. Yeah, Paul talked about that. Their conscience is seared. In other words, their lame brain. Their brain isn't working. Exactly. Hear me. That's the communication line that the Holy Spirit works. The Word of God. He's, the Spirit of God speaks to our spirit, our born again spirit, then communicates to our conscience. My conscience, Paul says, bearing me witness that this is the road I should go to and that road I should take. My conscience bearing me witness that I shouldn't go over here, but I should go this direction. Now, is our conscience a good guide? It is if you're born again and your mind is washed with the Word of God. But if it isn't, look at me, you're in trouble. I said you're in trouble. Because understand something. Some things the conscience can be seared in and the conscience can be persuaded, hear me, of uh, of this is the way to go. When the Spirit of the Lord already says, no, this is the way to go. We're going to follow one of the two. We're either going to follow what our conscience says, hear me, or we're going to do what we want to do. And you know what? Sometimes we say, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Nobody's not going to tell me anything. And that's called rebellion. It's called rebellion. How many know that's sin? To know what to know to do right and not do it. The Bible says it's sin. It's sin. I've been there, done that. You've been there, done that. We've been presumptuous. It wasn't faith at all. You was presumptuous. You, you, you launched out on your own ingenuity, but it wasn't the Lord. Folk, hallelujah. That's when, you, that's when you realize and recognize, you know what, I've been duped down along the line here someplace. You realize that, you know what, I really didn't petition the Lord on this. I really wasn't patient enough to wait on the Lord to see these things open up for me and to have a peace of mind. You know, here's one of the greatest things that you, can, you, can, you know you've got the will of the Lord. He said, by everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Now, in return, here, the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your heart and keep your mind. Brother and sister, if you come to the altar... And you kneel down at the altar and say, God, I turn this situation over to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We truly thank you and we praise you, God, for taking this circumstance, turning it around to be the greatest blessing that I've ever had. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. And then you get up and you just start talking about the opposite of what you prayed. And you don't understand why you don't have no peace. You just nullified that prayer, hear me, when God wanted to put a peace over you to settle you and calm you, hear me, but you wouldn't let him. You know why? Because you opened up your trap. That's right. The best thing you possibly do is not shout out what you feel. I feel like busting that guy in the nose. You know what? You'll find yourself busting that guy in the nose sooner or later down along the line. I feel like just telling that neighbor off. Well, you know what? Just the other day, you was praying for the favor of God for him. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let not that man think that he'll receive anything from the Lord. Think of this. You say one thing and do the opposite. Folk, that's called double-mindedness. 
and it's unstableness. You not receive anything from the Lord. But man, when you anchor your soul on the Word of God, and you know God spoke a word to you, hear me, all the devils in hell can come out against you, but yet there's a deep, settled peace way down deep on side of you, and you're just going, thank you, Lord. I know what you spoke to my heart, and I know it's going to come to pass in the name of of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And you know what? You'll have the boo birds, even your brothers and sisters in the Lord, to come out and boo you. The boo birds will come out. The devil's got boo birds all over. All right? Boo! 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 Doubters. Fearful. Worry. Anxiety. Depression. Oppression. They're all over. Demonic spirits to destroy the faith that we have in God Almighty. Folk, I don't know about you, but hear me. How we need to be anchored and steadfast and unmovable in the word of the living God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless the Lord. David made a statement in Psalms. He said this, he talked about an established heart. I don't know about you, but we need to have an established heart. It says that even when evil tidings come, this man will not be moved because his heart is fixed, stayed upon the Lord. Then the Bible says this in Isaiah, I believe it is, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. And the devil comes along and wants our mind stayed on the turmoil. On the... Uh, uh, Oh, man, can't think of the word now. It just slipped my mind. Uh, drama. Drama. Once on the drama. Man, you get on Facebook. I'm telling you, there's so much drama on Facebook. And you know what? People love it. Oh, they just love it, love it, love it, love it. They can't wait for more drama. Sometimes it just, you know what? It about makes you regurgitate. And you think, oh, Lord. Hear me. Let our minds be stayed on the Lord God. Some would say, well, you can be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. I've never seen anybody like that. I've seen Christians so earthly minded that they're no heavenly good. I would to God that we had Christians. And I include myself that's so heavenly minded, hear me, that we are real good here on the face of the earth in Jesus' name. Bless God. But hear me, child of God, bless the Lord. We're made up of triune. Body, soul, and spirit. Hallelujah. So the real you is not the you that I'm looking at, Fred. I see Fred here, a handsome young man. (laughs) Nice bald head, just like mine. I see Fred in physical form, but that's not Fred. I see that Fred is getting old, just the way I'm getting old. But can I tell you something, Fred? There's a man living on the inside of you that never ages. He's called the spirit man on the inside. And one day, he's going to be released out of our bodies. Are you hearing me? One day, hear me, we're going to step out of this body into a brand new body fashioned by God Almighty. Hallelujah to the Lamb forevermore. So when a person, when a Christian dies, look at me, his body goes back to the dust of the earth, hear me, but his soul and spirit go into the presence of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. They don't go into soul sleep as some teach. Hear me. Well, they're all sleeping. No, they're not sleeping. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. They're just as much alive now as what they've ever been. Matter of fact, hear me. I believe they're in the balconies of heaven cheering us on. The Lord permitting them to look down on some of us, hear me, to cheer us on. Come on, keep on going. Do that extra mile. Bless God. How many know faith needs to be tried? (laughs) If we want a body like, what's some of these muscle men? Arnold Schwarzenegger, he's an antique. (laughs) But he's still got a good body, I guess. I don't know. But you know what? We don't get a body like that sitting at home eating potato chips and, 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 and mowing down on french fries and, and uh, potato pie or whatever. 
You don't get that. Are you hearing me? Even though you think, well, bless God, you know, I got a macho body. Well, look, look at me, honey. You better look in the mirror. You can lie so long, but the mirror will not lie. It will tell you the truth. Are you hearing me? Can I tell you this? God's Word is a mirror. And it will tell you the truth. Don't get mad and smash the mirror. The mirror's only telling you what it's seeing. The Bible's telling you what it's seeing in you. It's up to us to allow God to correct what we're seeing in you. Come on, somebody praise God, would you? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. The spirit, soul, and body. When I die, my body goes, but my spirit is very much alive. More alive than it's ever been before. You know why? Because it's not, it, 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 this old clay tenement is not, it's like an anchor holding back the spirit that lives and abides on the inside of us. Praise the Lord forevermore. But I want us to understand before we close, and it's getting late. I want us to understand, and Paul told the church at Corinth, he said, Know you not that your bodies are the temple of the living God, and that you don't belong to yourself, but you belong to him which bought you with his blood. Therefore, glorify him in your body, in your soul, and in your spirit, in the name of the Lord. Look at me. That body of yours belongs to the Lord. When we come to Christ, we surrender all to Him. My will, surrendered to His will. I'm a vessel or a vehicle of the Lord God. Lord, if it's your will, I'm going here tomorrow. Or I'm going there tomorrow. Because I don't know what tomorrow holds, but you do know who tomorrow, what tomorrow holds. If it's your will... You know, I'm going to do this, I'm going to make this appointment, I'm going to do that appointment, this, this, and this. Understand me, this body belongs to the Lord. It's been bought and paid for. I use this for an example, and I promise you I'm going to close. It's kind of like you bought a brand new car, or it might be an older car. makes no difference, but you got, you got the pink slip. You've got the, the title for it. You bought, paid for it. And a real cold Windy night on, in the wintertime where the wind chill factor is 50 below zero. You've got your car in the garage and you go out and put the key in the, gar- in the, in the, the, the ignition and you go to start the ignition and all of a sudden your car starts speaking to you and said, it's too cold, I'm not going out in the weather tonight. <laughs> and you say, well, yes, you are. And he said, no, I'm not. I'm not going. That car's will has to be surrendered. And of course, we know a car don't have a will. Are you hearing me? But can I tell you this? It's getting to be that way. Where they're driving themselves. Kind of spooky, folk. Believe me, it is. Technology's getting really, really spooky. But anyhow, you say, well, you're getting out. And we're going out. You know, well, have you seen the temperature? The wind chill factor is 40 below zero. You're sitting in a warm car, me, enjoying yourself, and I've got to, to beat, get beat up by all this wind chill and everything else. There ain't no way I'm going out there. Can I tell you something? Let's put this in the spiritual. That's what we do to God. The very same thing we do to God. I'm not going to church Sunday. Uh-uh. I got too many appointments. Well, you didn't have to put church in there. Okay, I won't put church in there. Let's just put God in there. I don't have time to pray today. I'm too busy. <laughs> oh, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. For me. For you. You know why? Because 
You belong to him. And you know what? God don't keep a ball and chain on us. But that's decisions and choices that we make as being Christians. We either want to obey him or rebel against him. Well, you don't have to put that ugly word rebel. (laughs) I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Hear me. I could soft pedal it and say, well, you know, you just didn't feel like it. But if you put rebel in there, that just sounds, sounds creepy. Sounds evil. On the sight of God, it is. Hear me. I say, God, help us to be more like you. And I can't be more like you lest I come to the conclusion of the matter. That I don't belong to myself, I belong to him. The one that has purchased my salvation on the cross of Calvary in Jesus' name. Glory to the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Jesus said this, he was our prime example. Remember what I said, God man here on the the incarnation. He said, not my will be done, but your will be done. When he went to the cross, remember he went to Gethsemane first? And he went in there and he said, Lord, prayed three times, if there's any other way to get around this, let it be done. But nevertheless, not my will be done, but your will be done. I'm glad he obeyed the Father in Jesus' name. Can you give him a hand clap of praise? Stand your feet with me if you would, please. Bless the Lord. I trust you're not bored tonight, but I got a lot more I could say here, but we don't. I'm running out of time. Bless the Lord. But I thank the Lord for his word. His word is a a GPS system for us here on the face of the earth. To follow it, to obey it in the name of the Lord. Praise God. Listen to that still small voice on the inside. And if you're not sure about certain things, don't jump into it. Wait. Everybody say wait. One more time. Wait, Wait, and God will open the door. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Tony, go ahead and close us in prayer. Would you, brother?